Hey there, and welcome to the daily podcast where wisdom smacks us with kisses or love taps. I'm Michelle Spiva, a wisdom strengthening coach, your host, and practical priestess of wisdom. Join us daily to gain wisdom and mental strength as we tackle innovative thinking, address emotional and behavioral life traps, and yes, provide you with some practical how-tos to wrap it all up. So settle in or crank up the speed 2x, whatever gets your mental processes firing as we dive in. Stay tuned. There is a such thing as being too focused, too tuned in, where you ignore everything else to your detriment. And today we're going to be talking about that very thing. Hey, this is Michelle Spiva, your practical priestess of wisdom, and I do want to welcome you to today's podcast of Wisdom Smack. You know the drill. On the jump, we're going to be getting into it and we're going to be talking about two zoomed in. All right, I'll see you on the flip. Hey, it's Michelle Spiva, and thank you so much for joining me today. So let's get into it. My agenda for today is by the time we get through having our little conversation and sharing some wisdom smacks with you, is that you will get to the point where you have a healthy routine and habit uh, or need for having, knowing that you need a habit to pull back and to see the big picture as well as zooming in to see the details. Um, In our current situation, I'm guilty of this. I'm not going to say you are, but I know I've been guilty of it and a lot of people have been guilty of it. And that has been to be so focused on the minutia, on the details, and especially on the details of our lives, because we are currently um, in a situation where most people are having to change the way they they live, the way they do what they do. And there is so much uncertainty, so much ambiguity, so much uh, fogginess that it would be foolish for us not to be focused on the details of taking care of what we need to for our lifestyle and for who we are and and for the propagation of our continued ability to survive and thrive and make a living and, and have a life worth living. And so this is not to say, oh, you shouldn't, you know, be concerned about taking care of your life and and tending to your specifics. No, this is just now that we are aware of it and and we, we know we have a game plan. And, you know, please check out yesterday when I talked about, um, how the six movements of moving towards hopefully being able to thrive, uh, in your new, your new world, uh, your new normal, check that out. Um, and so now that you, we we have that, not just you, me, we have that, I want to say, okay, that's good, but don't always just do that. I am uh, reminded of the absent the absent-minded professor, the uh, person who is uh, uniquely focused on something of of great importance to the detriment of everything around them. Think of that person who their attention is solely focused on what they're doing and they are oblivious to things around them. There could be great danger coming, but they don't know about it because they are only focused on that one thing that catches and that captures their attention. And in how we look at our world, I'm going to say that uh, there has been a clever little uh, something that has been put into our world uh, where it compels us to do the most, if you will. And when I say do the most, whatever you do, commit to it real hard. And I'm very guilty of it, not only in the way I try to live my life, but in the things that I, I put out there to the world. And so today I'm, you know, saying, hey, do that 
until it's time to do this. Okay. And so, yes, it's really good to be mindfully specific about the wisdom that you use for your life individually and then, you know, expanding out for your family and stuff. But there comes a time when we also have to zoom out. And instead of being focused so much on the micro part of our world, look at the macro part because it's going to help us as well. And it is a way to uh, provide you safety, just like that micro level is. Now, micro meaning small, macro meaning large. Pulling out, we're talking about that macro, that larger side of our lives that we must give attention to. And the larger side, especially in times right now, it tends to get ignored or pushed to the back because when you look at effectiveness or how you can see effectiveness, the things that are done on the micro level in your life, you can see them, see the efforts or the effects of your efforts quickly. So if you're dealing with uh, your life, your livelihood, your health, and those types of things, you will quickly see that. But when you move over to the macro side and you do things for the, for the overall, for the, the, Uh, the global, if you will, the universal, your efforts don't seem to have as much impact because you can't see them as much. But it doesn't mean that they're not any less valuable and needed. And that's the problem where we can't see the initial or the quick benefits from our efforts. And so the macro side of what we do and how we live tends to get neglected more so than the immediacy of the power of when you do stuff for yourself. So pulling back to see the big picture and to start working on the big picture, it takes some belief. It takes a, a certain trust and hope in your efforts that they will pay off. It's kind of like the people who are able to deny themselves something in the immediacy so that they can have things in the future that are going to be bigger. And I wish I could say that I was that wise all the time about all things. Nope, I miss the mark a lot. I uh, miss the mark because sometimes my justifications and and um, and even the resources that I don't think I have to do that went out. But today, oh, today I got caught time because today I have time. We must. It is imperative that we do not neglect that larger side of ourselves and our lives and our placement in humanity at such a time as this. And so that's what we're talking about. So imagine, if you will, there you're able to get up to 30,000 feet above the surface of the earth. Um, most of us, if you've ridden a plane and never looked out of a window when you were on the plane, you've had this experience. And if you know what I'm talking about, you'll see that when you look down below, provided there is not a lot of cloud cover, you're able to see vast stretches of landscape. You're able to see the designs of the landscape. You're, you're, you'll look and see how the roads are laid out, how if there are areas that are agricultural, you can see those. And immediately patterns and um, frameworks start to pop out at you where you're like, wow, okay. I mean, and, and depending on if you're going Cross country, and I'm talking about the US, the United States, because that's what I'm most familiar with. If you're going cross country, you can see the changes in the terrain just as clear as all get out because you have the benefit of the big picture of being able to sit and look below on those um, mega levels, the, the meta and the mega and the macro level. And so you're able to see more. And think about it, if you're able to see more, if you're at that level operating, understand that your effort, the same amount of effort that you would be doing below, if you do it on high, you're able to get more out of it. And so we have to push past uh, the wanting to immediately get feedback on our efforts that are relegated to the macro or the smaller, uh, the local, the personal, and get to the point where we do 
get to uh, put in on the meta, the micro, le- I mean, the macro level, where it might not, your efforts might not seem uh, to be doing something immediately, but they have the potential for bigger impact. And so that's a wisdom that I was like, look, please help me to articulate this because it's an aha moment, if if ever there was one, to uh, be able to realize that in times such as these, the ability to affect things on the macro level uh, open up hundredfold, thousandfold, if you will. Um, today, I read something that I, I thought was brilliant. So I have been a customer of Zoom technology for a quite a while. Um, I remember when they were first starting out and it was said that the creators of Zoom used to work for another company, which is still in existence called GoToWebinar. And I remember having GoToWebinar many years and it being to the point where it priced me out of being able to keep it. So of course I went to other little things, but nothing was quite as good at the time of GoToWebinar. And then lo and behold, here comes Zoom. Zoom uh, seems to address a lot of the things that I liked about GoToWebinar at a fraction of the cost. So the short of it is, is I got in, got to using it, and it started to really help me. And uh, I started to see where the impact of what I did to be able to offer services directly, you know, either one-on-one or in group settings, I was able to continue to grow my livelihood, my income by being able to use this. And I would have not known about this service if I had been just trying to stick to what I knew and just pay attention to myself. It wasn't until I went back out into the the global markets and looked at what other people were using. And I I found out about Zoom from some of my colleagues uh, across the pond (laughs) who said, oh, we're using Zoom. And I was like, oh, okay. And um, and so it was it was something that not doing the normal of just trying to keep my own little garden, my own little world intact, I was able to gain something that did help my own little garden because I went outside. I went, um, you know, a beyond and got that insight and got that understanding. And I was very grateful for it. So understanding that we walk And I always talk about polarity. I talk about the middle. I talk about two sides. And we are always tasked with walking in a certain harmony of two extremes. And those extremes in this particular case are the small and the large. And if you find that you've been doing only things to deal with you and maybe what you do locally It's time for you to go back and incorporate what you do globally and find ways to figure out what that means for you because both of them are just as important. I remember, I don't know if it's, it's, I don't know why I always equate this with the parable of how uh, Rome was started with the twins who were raised by wolves. So I'm not going to connect those. But what I'm going to say is there is this um, famous story, you've probably heard of it, uh, where it talks about trying to teach a young man um, how to best the worst part of himself. And it goes like this, that within us live two wolves, uh, one for good, one for bad. And uh there is a way to make sure that you don't let the bad take over. And supposedly, you know, the, the situation is that the answer is, is that the one that grows and takes over is the one you feed the most. And I totally get it. And I agree with it. And I'm going to say that in everything, we must maintain a harmonic balance where too much of anything is bad for us. And too much of even feeding the good wolf is bad for us. We have to figure out 
when it's time to go to the left, when it's time to go to the right, and when it's time to have equal opposing opportunities going on. And I'm going to tell you, heads up right now, this is one of those times for most people where it's going to be beneficial to have equal opposing uh, influences from either side where there is a harmonic balance between. So right now, you are going to benefit from not only taking care of stuff that affects you individually, but to also be aware of things that are happening on a universal global level. There is um, this book that I mentioned yesterday, and I'll mention it again today. I'm going to drop the link to it in the show notes. And it's called Winners Take All by Anand Gera Haridas. And he talks about this uh, market uh, uh, initiative. And that's not the exact word that he calls them, but it's, it's an industry where they have taken people with an entrepreneurial spirit and instead of people going to do things of justice and um, and uh, making things uh, equal and, and the like for those uh, who are uh, less fortunate, they have instead touted that because we mostly live in an economic society full of capitalism, that the best way to do what you really want to do is to build a company that will help you to have leverage and pressure. And I'll be honest, I read the book, it's very powerful, but I got convicted because I saw and I still see where I was touting that without even knowing that that's what I was touting because I was taught that through my MBA program and and, um, how I have worked to do things. And I'm not going to say that it's all bad or all good, but I will say that this is what happens on the other side. When you only deal with things from a macro level. Um, I have also mentioned a book in the books in the past about debt and the bankers, Morgan, uh, the House of Morgan, you know, where we, uh, the first American bankers to make it big, who actually work with the Rockefellers and a lot of the, the European bankers uh, back in the um, uh, 19th century. And I saw it, but didn't realize that I was a byproduct of it. And that was where during that time, the, and they called them robber barons, but you've got your Carnegie's with um, the steel industry. You've got your Rockefellers with the oil and um, railroads. You've got Morgan uh, with his banking, Charles Schwab with investing, uh, and on and on and on. Uh, All of these different people coming out and what they were doing. And listen to this part really closely, please. I want you to understand Understand that there comes a time when there is a switch that is flipped uh, when it comes to earning money and then making money. A lot of people think they make money and they don't. At best, they work for it and then they earn it. But very few of us know what it means to make it. And the switch comes when your efforts of money, if you do it right, Your efforts of working for money are outpaced by the money working for you. And when you get to that point, if you've set up your systems correctly, then your money is unstoppable because it has tapped into compounding interest, exponential growth, and it becomes industrious on its own. And so this is when you had this industry being seen throughout the world where there were men who in a decade were going from nothing to what is equivalent to billions today. And it got to the point where there was public outcry. And I didn't realize until I was um, looking at this book is that um, I didn't see the pattern (laughs) But I was like, oh, my God, I'm a byproduct of this. I really am, you know, going to uh, get my education. I was taught this and didn't realize it. And that was that the philosophy and the belief of people who make money, a lot of money, they can't help but work on the 
macro, the large level. And so what some of these men did, because the amount of money that was being made on their behalf became gross. I mean, it was just, it, it, Ooh, it was really bad between what they had and the average person had. So they started foundations instead of charities, where charities were meant for local. Okay, so local is going to be macro. So if you have a local charity, it's to help people in your local area. But when you get to the point where your money is making money for you, you you work on a global um, area. And so what they did was is they set up these foundations with endowments and they hired people to manage the money to give back. Uh, there's even a whole treatise that uh, Carnegie wrote about how uh, because he and some others are gifted with making this money that eventually we'll get it back because they'll give it back to us. They can't take it with them, you know, and it, it actually became known as his, uh, his gospel of wealth for Carnegie, but I don't have time to go into that. What I do want to say is, is that the macro level of, uh, of, of things, especially dealing with these people who had a lot of money was that they wanted to affect change from the 30,000 foot view, the big picture. So they would do foundations instead of, and so instead of paying, uh, you know, if you get short, you know, they cover your living expenses for a few days or, or, or weeks or months, they would build you a library or build you a university or, or some type of thing so that you would be able to enjoy those things and hopefully better yourself. Now, it wasn't about uh, the charity as much as it was about them providing you with opportunities to help yourself. And I want to mention this part because if you are so zoomed in, inking out, itching out, scratching out what you're going to do today or tomorrow, you could possibly miss what's happening in broad reaches on the macro level and be taken unawares of them. And I'm not going to argue for or against. That's really up to you as to how you feel about people who uh, have a lot of money uh, wanting to always operate in the macro side of things. But what I will say this, say is this, that a lot of rich and wealthy and powerful are used to uh, getting us, the masses, to focus on the local, the personal, and the uniquely specific so that they can focus on the macro, the global, and the mass movement because they understand that what they do today in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, you'll never be able to um, contend with if you're only doing the local. So they understand power. And I wrote this down and I'm, I'm, it's still evolving, uh, but I wrote this down a little while ago and it took me a minute to find it, but <laughs> this is where I am right now with this understanding. And, and, and it appears to me at this particular time that throughout the ages, power is snatched, strength is grown and wisdom is revealed. And my hope is that through understanding that you do yourself no favors if you only focus on one or the other, but that you start training yourself to focus on both being zoomed in and how to be zoomed out, how to start seeing those patterns that um, emerge when you take that 30,000 foot view so that you don't be duped by what's going on above you. And that you don't be so distracted that you think the only thing that matters is what's for you and yours, but that you realize just how much power is being snatched, just how much power is being revoked. But knowing that you can counteract it by continuing to grow your strength and continuing to have wisdom revealed to you as you continue to seek and understand it and expect to understand it. Because it matters that we get the big picture. It matters that we get the details of the picture. It matters that in times as now, that while we might be in the throes of trying to survive and then thrive, we can also continue to train ourselves to see the gaps that reveal a lot of opportunity. 
Now, I, I, I wanted to put this one in so that you would see an example of what I'm talking about. So right now I talked about Zoom and I talked about how um, it helped me to understand that I can't just always rely locally. I, I have to make sure that I keep my, my resources, my friends and, and acquaintances global as well. But this same company, Zoom, there was uh, something that, and I, I was just totally stoked. This young man uh, who um, is in the masses decided to do a 30,000 foot view. And what he did was, is with Zoom taking off as much as it has, he decided to go and get some uh, photos from a, a photographer acquaintance of his, license them, and sell them in packs of five with three bonuses uh, for Zoom backgrounds so that people who are not uh, wanting to reveal, you know, they're doing their Zooms in their bedrooms or whatever could have um, nice Zoom backgrounds. Uh, it is a feature on Zoom. It has always been there. And what he did was, is he was like, okay, $10 and you get these. And I thought it was brilliant because he did not just look at what he could do locally. He looked at a global phenomenon of how Zoom is uh, taking off uh, and people are buying them in droves. And I was like, that is really brilliant. It really is. And it comes from a thinker, it comes from somebody who is willing to zoom out to see what's happening on the global level. Um, one of the other things that I, I want to say is, is that in times like now, it doesn't have to just be people who are naturally gifted with the opportunity gene to see opportunity. You can see opportunities by doing this and by studying patterns. Uh, one of the areas is like this young man. If I get asked, you know, Things like what's coming up? What's the best thing to write next? What what industry should I look at to be able to make money online? I get asked a lot of those things. And I usually tell people, you do want to study patterns. But what I'm going to also tell you guys now, so think of this as a wisdom smack bonus, is that when in doubt, pull out. Look globally at what's moving. And if it is an emerging technology, an emerging industry, look and see what byproducts you can um, add. And instead of looking at things as a competitor, look how you can complement something. That's one of the biggest areas that you'll grow from when you get on the macro level, when you take that 30,000 foot view, because that's what he did. He didn't try to go and start a Zoom competitor. No. What he did was is he looked to see how can I complement this? How can I make it a better experience for his existing users? And so he packaged together a set of together, I think they're all eight backgrounds, sells them for $10, and people are buying them in droves. And thus, he does not get any pushback from Zoom because he's making their product even better. And that, my dear friends, is why one of the many reasons why you want to zoom out, why you want to start getting used to not only looking at the details or just even looking at you, your local and your personally specific things, but you also want to get used to looking at the global, the macro and the mass movement because there is so much opportunity. And as I have these last few minutes, I kind of want to just make sure that if you don't uh, if you don't leave with anything else for today, and thank you for making it to this point, I want you to know that it comes down to your survival sometimes to not be so focused on what's going on with you and yours, because there are things and opportunities that would take away your 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 freedoms and your liberties in certain areas. So be aware of that. Yes, we've got to continue to keep business going and we got to continue to do a whole bunch of things. But when you when you are in remembrance that I can't just be focused on me and mine, I need to pull out and see what's going on in the world around me, you'll start to see opportunities, but more so 
You'll start to see opportunists and you'll figure out if they be for you or against you, if there's things you need to do to protect yourself or if there are opportunities that you can take advantage of. And it will help you to get to the point where you are being able to, um, you'll be, <laughs> you're being able to benefit from being more rounded to live a, 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 a life that has bigger potential. You know, um, it's, it's something about understanding that those who are always told to focus on the local, focus on the personal, how distracted they are, they can, because those in the know can get so much snuck by you. So really quickly, I want to just recap this by saying that don't be so zoomed in on what's going on with you, with local and, and, and those types of things. Pull back every now and again. Understand that the wealthy, the rich and the powerful, what they do is they operate on the macro global levels. Think about why they set up foundations and the like. They get the benefits of the taxes and the goodwill. And it has even been said that it is the tax that the rich pay for you not starting a revolution on them because of how much money that they get. Understand that one of the quickest ways to move out of working for money and finally getting money to work for you is to think globally and get on the macro level. And so don't don't be afraid of your 30,000 foot views. They will give you a lot of insights and a lot of understanding. So guess what? Yeah, my time is up. I thank you for yours. This has been Michelle Spiva, your Practical Priestess of Wisdom with another podcast of Wisdom Smack. I am going to see you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Bye. And that's going to do it for today's podcast of Wisdom Smack with Michelle Spiva. If you like this podcast, please help us get the word out. Like, comment, subscribe, and even share. And if you really like it, please help us continue to get the word out by considering using this show's link for Amazon. So when you want to go to Amazon and you do all of your general shopping, uh, please use michellespiva.com forward slash AMZ. It's simple as that. It doesn't cost you anything extra. And this show might receive a little bit of commission that will go towards helping to further get these episodes out to you and to others. So thank you so much for listening. This has been Michelle Spiva with Wisdom Smack. Bye.